Hi guys, welcome back to the DriveWorth channel. In today's video, I thought I'd bring you along on my drive home from work. Um, it's an absolute stunner of a drive, and I just thought we could uh, cover a few bits and pieces while we're on our way back. I won't show you the whole drive because you won't want to sit and watch me driving for half an hour and listen to me for half an hour, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll take you through the scenic bits and then we can um, call it a day. So in this video, I thought I'd talk about an issue that I've been having with the S80 uh, that's only really started over the last couple of days. Um, when I've been driving to work or back from work, the car has been feeling a bit funny. It's um, the only way I could describe it is sort of a hiccup while driving. The car sort of be cruising along, it's only under very light engine load, sort of 50 miles an hour cruise control type stuff. Um, but suddenly the car will just skip a little bit um, as if the power's cut or something like that. Um, which is quite difficult to notice because sometimes if you're on a bumpy road, it's, it feels like you've always hit a bump. Um, but I noticed a slight, just little drop in the rev counter. So um, yeah, I've had a, I've had a sort of a look, uh, done a bit of research, etc. And I've run some diagnostics, which I'm going to make a video on, which is going to be the, the follow-on video to this uh, when we get home, um, to sort of see if we can diagnose the problem. And there has been a fault uh, that's come up, which is one of the sensors in the engine. So that's going to be um, sorted. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd take a chance to talk about what these cars are like to work on, uh, what they're like um, as a sort of DIY person, whether you should really maintain it yourself, the, the, the Volvo. So um, if you're like me, you like these cars, um, or you bought these, this sort of S80, this sort of era, S80, and V70, XC70, etc., because they're they're pretty solid, reliable cars, um, and at the moment they're pretty reasonable priced. I bought mine just before the COVID pandemic, so before um, the car market went a bit crazy. But uh, even now, you can still pick up some really good value Volvos. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those cars. Um, now I'm one of those people I, I enjoy working on cars I enjoy everything about cars this channel is all about the maintenance ownership etc of these cars and you'd be staggered the amount of money uh, you can save by doing your own maintenance um, now I've always done my own maintenance purely because when I was in college and at uni I couldn't afford to repair bits on cars so um, or have pay someone to do it um, and now now I'm older and I can't afford it, um, I have a an inner sort of repulsion to paying people to do something that I can just do myself, whether it take me um, two hours or an entire day. Um, I'd much rather do it myself than um, pay someone to do it, because you just save an absolute fortune. Um, so in terms of that sort of or a P3 Volvo is that sort of car is, in my opinion, a great car for that sort of thing. They're not too complicated. Granted, there are various computers, etc. Um, compared to, say, an old classic car or um, sort of an early 90s car, there's a lot more technology and computers involved with this car than there is, say, uh, one of those. But um, compared to most modern cars, these are fairly simply laid out and easy to work on. All of your maintenance items are dead easy. Um, the only thing I would say that's a slight caveat to that is mine is easier than most because I've actually fitted a, to, um, a physical dipstick uh, which makes life so much easier but if you were to just change the oil with um, using the traditional sump dump method uh, which is quite sort of raising the car and getting under draining the, the oil out of the bottom like most people do and most mechanics do then that is also very easy on these cars too. Uh, the fuel, the oil filter even is sat right on the top of the engine. You don't have to get on your hands and knees and crawl under and undo a cartridge or anything. It's a what they call um, an element filter where it clicks in to a housing and then screws, you screw the lid back on. Um, 
So provided you've got the right tools, then it's absolutely fine. Now regarding tools, I always say it's always worth investing in the right tool. Um, so I think you need a 36 millimeter socket. Um, no, sorry, 30, yeah, 36 millimeter socket on the oil filter housing. Um, otherwise you'll struggle a bit. But um, yeah, it's just, just so easy to do. Coolant change, exactly the same. Um, this is stuff I've never done before, um, but I, I decided to do because this car makes it fairly easy. It goes even as far as changing headlight bulbs. These, these headlights on these cars remove just by pulling two pins out, um, and then the whole headlight cluster comes out. Um, and it's the easiest car sort of work on that I've ever actually owned and more ever experienced um, so from that point of view it really is nice and easy nice and easy another thing I love about it is the fact that the engine is sort of mounted on the front and transverse which means you don't have to be reaching over the back for stuff um, everything you need to get to is right on the front of the engine or at the top um, so you really can't ask for much more than that we're just getting into sort of the, the more scenic bit so if you can actually see it but those hills over there we're going to be going over them um, and in the morning you, you'll come along and start mm -hmm. going up over the hills and you're above the clouds and the view is just absolutely stunning we're in um, east wales i suppose just we're going to be just coming over the, the border um, home into england um, but uh, yeah i work in wales and it's absolutely stunning um, and not raining um, I didn't it doesn't actually rain as much in Wales as uh, people say it does so uh, that's something to consider as well so in terms of sort of I've discussed this obviously before parts and ownership and maintenance that side of things parts aren't that expensive at all um, they're readily available a lot of the stuff I just get from Amazon or Euro car parts it's a nice easy one to do um, so that that's not too much of an issue in terms of computers, these cars don't tend to have many electronic gremlins. The only ones that they do have can be fairly easily rectified uh, through preventative maintenance, such as replacing the windscreens. Now, for those of you that don't know, or you perhaps have found out when it's too late, these cars were fitted with faulty windscreens, or they weren't stuck in properly, basically, the windscreens. Um, and as a result, they leak water um, like a sieve. <laughs> it's really not great. I, when I bought this car, I would have to literally drive along in the rain with a cloth in my door pocket, and the water would collect and start dripping down. I'd have to hold it up and wipe it, or it would start running down the windscreen. Um, so, yeah, that obviously isn't great for a car with electronics. Obviously, all of this dashboard and stuff is all electronic. Where does the water go? It goes down the windscreen into the dash. Um, and so I've heard some, some horror stories about cars that have been nearly written off because of this. Um, fortunately, mine wasn't that bad. Um, I opted to have the windscreen replaced. That was a white right Palava in itself. Um, I wouldn't suggest going to Volvo with a sort of a, a goodwill claim or anything because it just became a nightmare. It's easy just to get it done under insurance. Um, we have some damage on the windscreen anyway um, so that's a nice easy fix if you don't it just goes and fries all the electrics long term it's an absolute nightmare another one of the electric issues that these have um, that can cause you a lot of headaches is the fact that there's a few sort of wiring harnesses in the engine bay that are perhaps as well protected as they could be especially some of these diesels that rattle a bit more than the old petrols or a bit less refined um, you find that these these can chafe um, and cause things to short now it's very rare and I, don't, I haven't actually seen anyone suffer major issues from it um, I've seen a lot of chafed cables um, and people taping them up on forums etc but other than that I haven't seen any serious serious issues coming from that so I'm not I wouldn't worry too much um, but from the, the whole sort of digital um, maintenance that modern cars have, these cars are again fairly simple. Um, you've got, I think it's about 
nine different modules uh, that make up part of the, the whole sort of CAN bus system. For those of you that don't know, CAN bus is the, the, the web of computers basically that make up the computer system in the car. So you get these different modules that are responsible for different things. So you've got one for braking, uh, the engine, uh, the transmission, uh, the aircon, everything, everything, every sort of main component or main system in the car has its own module that then they all talk to each other um, and basically that's how the car works nowadays um, these can be read with specialist tools and i say specialist tools but you shouldn't be worried about that um, they're not expensive um, i use quite a budget setup you can use uh, what's called Vida Dice, which is the Volvo Diagnostic System, uh, which is fantastic. It gives you everything you need. It includes all sorts of uh, manuals, uh, sort of job instructions. It's like a giant Haynes manual, direct from Volvo, um, with how, exactly how to look after the car. You can perform various functions as well. Um, but that's about £160, £170. It's not very user friendly for an amateur um, or a novice, someone who's looking to get into it. So I, I personally use um, a system called Garage Pro. Um, now this, I've done a lot of testing on various different OBD reading uh, software, etc. Um, and this has actually been the best one. I've compared it to Vida Dice and it pretty much does or can read as deeply as um, the entire Vida Dice system. Um, so in terms of diagnostics, it is on par with Vida Dice um, for pretty much half the price. I mean, I I got in early with the software developers um, and bought a lifetime subscription uh, for 70 quid. So I've now got unlimited diagnostics. Um, I'm not sure if they still offer that uh, at that price. Um, I think you can pay yearly as would be as well. This is just some of the scenery. Over literally over my shoulder now, there's a, just a massive valley. Um, but this side of the valley is not too uh, shabby either. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera. But um, yeah, so I, I use uh, Garage Pro just with a little 20 quid OBD reader. It connects to my phone, I can do scans very quick actually with the scans I can get live data readouts etc and that's how I diagnose the issue that I'm going to talk about in our next video um, that is a fantastic bit of kit and something everybody can get hold of really easily in all the, it's all on Amazon all the app store you don't need to do anything special uh, you don't have to be highly trained in it it, it actually comes with tutorials and tells you everything um, so that side of things really doesn't scare me at all and there's more and more of these software packages or apps that are able to read deeper into the car systems. I mean, Carly is perhaps the most famous one. Um, I haven't used that on Volvo. I've got a bit of a bitterness towards them because they ripped me off um, when I had my BMW. They, they, I paid for the lifetime thing. Um, they then changed it so they didn't offer the lifetime thing anymore. They were going to respect it for the people who already paid. They asked me to provide a receipt. I deleted the email and that was that. Um, so that was a bit annoying and I actually found a much cheaper alternative for BMWs um, there anyway. So, um, so that's one um, you've got, we use one for the Jeep called J-Scan, uh, which is the same thing. You can also add features on, that, on those certain ones. With the Garage Pro you can't, um, but realistically there's not that much to turn on and off on these Volvos. They're not like the... Um, hidden coding features on BMWs where BMW fit the option and then don't allow you to do it unless you pay for it is I think Volvo are a bit more honest than that um, or I'd like to think they are anyway um, so yeah as, a, as an ownership prospect and a sort of DIY maintainer prospect you these cars are really really good I think that the P2s uh, the older ones are better because they're more mechanical uh, there's less computery stuff um, to worry about. Granted, um, the transmissions aren't as stout as this one, uh, this TF-80SC, 
but this has uh, the premium the P2 ones had the AW55 which are very good when maintained um, so yeah it's a lot of a lot of it is down to what you prefer what you like P3 is a more comfortable car um, for long to long cruises etc um, so that's something to consider but yeah as an overall ownership package these cars are fantastic um, you certainly should not be scared or intimidated by the prospect of maintaining it yourself uh, you'll save an absolute fortune don't get me wrong there are certain jobs that you may need to visit a Volvo dealer for but um, or, or, or a specialist is actually what I'd advise because specialists tend to be actually more interested in the car uh, rather than just trying to make you off um, so if you have to concede at any point then definitely um, worth going to a specialist over um, dealer and realistically you're not, you're not ever going to break your car by doing anything stupid um, unless you're really stupid so uh, don't be but um, yeah apart from that um, crack on um, let me know what you guys thought your guys thoughts are let me know how many of you are DIY maintainers um, I obviously am and uh, that's what this channel does is sort of inspire and help people become that save you guys fortune in the long run um, and yeah let us know your thoughts on this video compare also the P2 and the P3 platforms if you've had both which do you need to maintain I'd be quite interested to know that 